Nice to see you all. Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. Tracy, thank you for that lovely introduction. I love seeing your guitar behind you, by the way. I have a wall of guitars upstairs that I just put up that I'm very proud of. Uh, Tracy's in New Jersey. I'm in San Diego, California. Good evening to everybody on the East Coast. And uh, for those of you on the West Coast, where I am as well, good afternoon. Uh, we have people tuning in uh, from all across the world today, which is really exciting and really cool. So I want to thank you for joining us. Um, if this is your first time with the Broadway Mentors Program, if this is the first time you visited here, I encourage you to go to the Broadway Mentors Program website and really check out what they've got. This is something, man, if I had had this when I was a kid, I would have been beside myself. There are some brilliant, brilliant mentors here who span decades of Broadway shows, television and film, and for you guys to have access to them is unbelievable. And I'm, I'm actually a super fan of a lot of the people that are here. So it's a really an honor for me to get to be among this group of mentors and to get to spend this time with you tonight. So thank you for your investment uh, in your either current career or your uh, potential career upcoming and for your investment in your craft and for hanging out with me tonight. So let's dive right in. Uh, I have titled my talk tonight, The Practice, Playing the Part of You. Now, that divides into two parts, The Practice, Playing the Part of You. I want to focus a little bit right now on part two of this title, Playing the Part of You. Um, I have been really, really fortunate in a career that has spanned uh, more than 30 years now uh, in Broadway shows and a little bit of TV and film work. And in that time, I've been lucky to work with some of the people that are the greatest creators in our industry that have literally created these playgrounds that all of us are going to encounter. They've encountered, uh, they've, they've created the shows like Fiddler on the Roof. I was lucky enough to work with Jerome Robbins, who created Fiddler on the Roof, with uh, Trevor Nunn and John Caird, who created Les Miserables. Hal Prince, who created Phantom of the Opera. And uh, luckily, that, that there's a good list of people there, and most recently with Casey Nicola, who uh, created, with the boys who created South Park, created the Book of Mormon, and many, many other great Broadway shows. These are the playgrounds that we all get to work on. And in auditioning for them, and working with them, to create the truest and most honest performances that we could come up with, all of these different creators, I want to tell you, my goal today is to give you guys something to take away. Even if this is the only work we do, is this webinar today, I want to give you something that you can take away and apply right now that's going to take you, take you into a new level of your work. Um, so in my work with these various different creators, I began to notice that there was a commonality between what they all wanted and what they were all looking for. What do you think they were looking for? I'm going to leave you to ponder that question while we come to the first part of my talk, which is called the practice. Now, the practice, when we go see, this is a title that I have given to the work that we do. When we go to a doctor, or when we go to a dentist, or when we go to a lawyer, there's an old fashioned term they used to say we, they, they would hang their shingle outside the door which basically if you don't know the term means they just put a sign outside the door and the sign would say the practice the law practice of so and so or it would say the the medical practice of so and so the dental practice of so and so i love this word and i've actually pulled a couple definitions that i'm going to read to you that are down here uh when they use when we use this word in that way, the practice of, it's being used as a noun, and it means a couple different things, but one of them is a professional business. The other thing it means is a systematic exercise for proficiency, okay? Keep that in mind. I love this word, and I think this is a great word for what we do as artists. And the reason that I love it, these are arts that we are, that we are doing. Um, they're not proofs. They're not math problems. It's an art. Uh, in other words, an audience is not looking for you to walk on a stage and come up with two plus two equals four. They, and they're not going to follow you as you go and go, oh, two, two, four. Ha ha, great work. That, that's not what they want. They want magic. They want passion. They want life. And life comes out of the arts. 
and it comes out of the art. So rather than think of these things that we do as a proof, I like to think of them as a practice. And the beauty of that word is we're never, when you're practicing, you're never finished. I love the idea that great painters, Renoir or George Seurat, even though a painting has a border and there's a place where they stopped and put down the brushes or put down whatever medium they're working with, I like to believe those paintings are never really finished. That if you imagine beyond where the frame is, there's a whole other world that can continue there. And maybe the artist saw that, but they chose to just give you this particular view right at that time. When we are working as actors, when we're performing at night or, or in the day or in front of the cameras or however we're doing it, we're taking a series of disciplines that we've been trained in and we are practicing our art. And it's not about perfection. It's not about a finished thing. One of the other mentors here, uh, Anthony Curbelo, says uh, one of the things he loves about the craft in his teaching, he says, is there are no wrong answers, that there are many, many ways to, to move through. I don't want to call it solving a problem, but there are many, many ways to arrive at a result. And they may vary from night to night. But in a practice, we're always giving the best we have, using the best tools that we've trained to, to develop our work. And when we read the word that way, it's read as a verb, and it, re it means to perform or work at repeatedly so as to become proficient. So let's move through. Why did I come up with this concept? You know, there are, you will take, uh, you will study with many, many acting teachers, and you're going to learn a lot of things, and you're going to hear a lot of the same things taught in a new way. There's a great expression that there's nothing new under the sun, and it's true. But there are new ways of hearing things, and that's why I sort of framed this the way we did. And why it began to become important to me not to just be an actor, but also to become an acting coach is I had this sense when I was a young actor, and I had no real training, but was lucky enough to get cast in some parts. So I would get a role, I would get a, a, a role and I would memorize the lines and I would memorize the lyrics to the songs and I would hopefully sing them in a way. They'd make costumes for us in a, in a set and I would wear the costumes and I would give some kind of a performance. But I always felt as if the piece, the play, the, the TV show, the film, the musical, whatever the, the uh, medium was, I almost felt like it was a building and that building was behind me and I didn't know how to get in. It was almost as if that building didn't have any windows or doors and I was outside in front of it wearing the costumes moving through it, but I couldn't find a doorknob. I couldn't find a way to get in and I had this sense that if I could just get inside that building, if I could just live, truly live inside the world of that piece, that's where the power is. That's where the magic is. That's where the life is. The thing that I think the audience and, and I and you as artists, that's where those things are, those things that we're looking for. So what the practice is, is a practical method. It is a system of questions, investigative questions to ask yourself when we do a play and we're given the text. Inside that text, and it could just be one song, it doesn't have to be an entire play, it doesn't have to be the whole thing, it could be a scene, but inside that material are various really specific clues that give us actionable behaviors, things to play when we are singing a song or when we are doing it. And the tricky thing is, is that when we don't have these actionable, actionable behaviors, the mind, our greatest tool right up here, the imagination, engages itself otherwise. It starts worrying about things that are outside of you, externals, things like that. And it pulls you away from your practice, from your work, which is to tell, to be a storyteller and to give true and meaningful behavior through your work, right? So what this does, this system, is it sort of stops what I call monkey mind. The mind functions a little bit like a monkey and it will just sort of chase whatever. And with the practice, with a system, with a series of questions that you have asked and answered, 
you will get the answers that you need for this actionable behavior and your mind will engage in those specific things. It'll engage your superpower of your imagination and through that you're going to be fully and completely engaged in bringing to life the answers to the questions that you've asked and they will give you actionable behaviors, right? So this is an awesome, awesome tool. And the beauty of this is when this happens, we get into what is called flow state. And I'm sure you've heard this, ex this expression before. It's sort of when, once you've gotten away from the, the troubling behaviors, the things that are outside of yourself, and you've gotten yourself on a direct path of really connecting to the material, connecting to yourself, connecting to your vulnerability, which the practice and all of the questions that are involved in it will lead you to, they bring you into this place of flow where not only have you got the information that you've thought about and prepared, but you might get a new inspiration. You might get something that's going to, that you weren't planning, that will set you free and you'll have freedom to move through this. And the cool thing about the elements of the practice, when we put them together, they become like a roadmap. So imagine doing a role or doing a song. Let's take it down to just doing a song. Imagine doing a song is that you're going on a trip. So the song is your vehicle and you're going to get in that vehicle. And it's almost as if along the way, you're bringing in a new passenger. You have one question that you've asked yourself about the text and the answer is your passenger that gets in the car. That gives you something to engage. You go to the next point of the song and you've got another piece to engage you. And as you move through, by the time you get to the end of the song, you've shared with an audience all of these wonderful things that are right inside your vehicle. It's a big concept and there are a lot of parts to it. But the beauty of this is when we hit the flow state with all of this stuff, that's where the magic happens. That's where we stop doing a proof and that's where we start doing a practice. And we start giving the audience exactly what they want. Honesty, truth, vulnerability, passion, guts. It's a very cool thing. The practice is a system to bring you to the truth. Right. I want to describe to you one of my, my earliest audition experiences uh and it was it was a professional it wasn't a union experience it was auditioning uh i grew up in cincinnati ohio and i was auditioning for king's island uh the theme park there and i think they still do but they used to do a lot of live shows they, they do a lot of live shows and i was uh, a senior in high school and i went to audition and i'd never been to a professional audition before i think i sang uh everything's up to date in kansas city from um oklahoma and I had a dance routine to it that I had done in a dance recital and all these different things. And so I, I felt ready to do it. And I walked into the room and, and my experience was, wow, that the table where the auditioners are sitting, that's really far away from me. Wow. Oh, they're starting my music. Oh, I have to, have to start. Well, I better, I, I need to start singing. Oh, this is weird. All the other auditioners are sitting in the room too and they're watching me and I'm distracted by them. And, and I start thinking, is it really hot in here? It feels really uncomfortable. And oh, are they going to let me finish my song? I wonder if they're going to let me finish. Oh, wait, no, no, focus on the song. You're supposed to be doing the song. And wow, these shoes are really tight. I should have worn that other pair of shoes. Has this happened to you in an audition where what I call the monkey mind sort of takes over and it hijacks the entire experience and you lose track of it? So I tell this story because I feel like we can all relate to this. We've all been in those auditions where we lose track. Now, by the way, this, this thing did not work out. This particular job did not work out for me. Um, but what it did make me realize was, you know, I really do want to come up with a way to do this. And when you have this, when you have this system, when you have a practice of your own, where you know exactly what you're focusing on to get genuine, honest behavior. That's where your focus goes and it sets you free. It should be absolutely freeing.